Yo, 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 you already know who it is. It's King Jones. It's a football pull up. We're going to try something different this time, yeah? So, let me bit. Yeah, cool. We're going to try something different this time. So, what we're going to do is we're going to call it Top 10 Transfers of the Decade. We're going to start with Liverpool. So, I'm going to look at the Top 10 Transfers. I'm going to do this in order. I'll probably have honorable mentions. But, yeah, let's get straight into it. Wait, before we even start this, I'm just going to say if you're watching this video, you haven't subscribed and put the notifications. You see all the notifications. We do more than just football. Yeah, uh, we do all kinds of topics. But let's get straight into it. Innit? So, 10. Coutinho. Yeah. I don't know if you guys forgot about Coutinho because obviously he's gone to Barca and now he's at Bayern. But I thought Coutinho was the next outstanding player. He came in 2012. He went for the title challenge. Uh, let's see what we've got here. He had the most goals from outside the box between his time from when he came to when he left. Um, played 201 games, 54 goals, 45 assists. Played in multiple positions. Remember, I remember he was on the left. He played wide left. He played in the centre. He played attacking midfield. He played for Klopp. He played for Rodgers. Completely different jobs. He was world class, 100%. Um, before he just went to Barcelona. I think he scored like 13, 13 plus goals just before he left. Um, yeah, I thought he outstanding ability, great player, one Liverpool player this season, I think, um, one or two times. The only thing that he's lacking, the reason why he's low on this list is because a lot of the guys who are going to go through this list, they've just won a lot more than what he did. And though he was a fantastic talent, he was, I, he was part of a team that wasn't really doing it. And arguably you could say that he wasn't doing it for his first two or three seasons to the level that he became when he left. So, yeah, let's go straight to nine. Nine is a player that I'm a massive fan of. He probably might be, I'm an Arsenal fan, but he might be my favourite Liverpool player, Wijnaldum. So, Wijnaldum is a player that I think is supremely underrated. He had to make my top ten. You know what I mean? He had to make my top ten. I mean, he's a fantastic football player. He's the only centre mid that, I think he's a centre mid that plays the most games season to season. Obviously, Henderson got injured partly this season, and last season he was getting benched a bit. But Ronaldo was the only player. He's the most box box player in the team. Obviously, we already know he's won the Premier League, Champions League, UEFA Super Cup. <laughs> You're going to get bored of me saying that. FIFA World Cup, been to a uh, runners up. He also um, was in Champions League team of the season. Remember, he had these famous two goals against Barcelona to help him get to the final. The guys completely changed positions from when he came to Newcastle, he was at AMC. He moved a bit further back his first season. He scored like six goals and like nine assists. He completely scored less goals because he became more of a ball carrier, more of like a Dembele role at Tottenham. So probably has less chances than goal. I think out of all the centre mids, he's the most, he's the one that normally scores the most goals. He gets five or six goals and he scores more goals than Henderson, more than Fabinho, normally more than Keogh, completely flopped. Kia is not going to be on this list. Anyone that wants Kia to be on this list is the wrong video. But yeah, I think he's a fantastic football player. Um, yeah, he actually started, I think he started 35 games this season. I think mean, that's more than any of the other sentiments. I think he's crucial to the way the team play. And I think he's fantastic at his job. That's why he made my uh, top 10. Let's go to eight. Eight is a player that didn't cost much. He didn't cost eight million. Andrew Robertson. She is like, Come on. The price alone like gets him, you know, slightly higher up the list than the first two. Eight, I think it was eight million from a relegated team. He comes into you know Liverpool, wins everything they they got to offer. You know all the stuff I said before. Gets the Champions League team of the season. You know what I'm saying? Um, UEFA Champions League. Uh, what do you call, yeah, squad of the season. I think he won seventh best defender in the world. 23 assists in the last two seasons. I think he got 12 assists this season, 11 assists last season, which is higher numbers than I can remember any left back getting. He's a fantastic crosser of the ball. Fantas I mean, he's a fantastic crosser of the ball. I actually think he's better defensively than Trent. I don't think he's as good going forward. He's very well balanced. He's very intelligent. He reads the game well. You know what I mean? I think he's the... For me, he's the best left back on the planet. You know what I'm saying? I, obviously, people think Alfonso Davis, but for me, he's the best left back on the planet. And he's crucial to that team. He's definitely the best left back in the Premier League. And to get those sort of attacking numbers and still be great defensively part of a great defensive unit has to be on that list. And for value for money, arguably, he could have been higher. But, you know, you guys, you know, decide whether you think he was too low, whether he should have been on the list completely. Um, yeah, but we're going to continue. Seven. Listen, this seven is controversial, yeah, because I, I can't lie to you. I'm not a massive fan of this player. I'm not. I, I, 
I don't see it in it. Um, I understand why he's on the list. I had to put him on the list based on what he's done. I don't think he's a bad football player or anything like that, but I can't lie and say I'm a massive fan of him. And that's Jordan Henderson. So Jordan Henderson, captain of the team that wins the Champions League, final, Premiership, UEFA Super Cup. Um, he's won, he actually won a League Cup with them as well, been to another League Cup final, been to UEFA final. Um, Liverpool's fan player this season, this season. Won FWA football player this season, this season. Cost him 20 mil. Played multiple positions, scored a lot of important goals. Given that he's not the most technically gifted, but he is a worker. And he's not as bad as what you know everyone's given him. I think some of the players I even put below him, I think Ronaldo, for me, is a better football player. But again, to lead a team is still very difficult to be there when the team needs you to do the job that doesn't always look the best um, is very difficult. So I just think just based off captaining the team and him not actually being a bad football player, he's actually quite decent to good, you know, no matter what he does or what Klopp wants, I have to put him there at seven. I'm going to go straight to six. This is where it's going to start getting tricky because certain people want to have these players higher and lower. I think this is where it starts to get tricky. For me, six goes to Firmino. A lot of people probably would have had him higher, but for me, yeah. Obviously, you know, he's won everything I said before. 244 games, 78 goals, 60 assists, fantastic assist record. Started off as an AMC when he came. You remember, got to UEFA Cup final. Um, what's it called? I would say he's the ultimate link player. You know, Champions League team in the season. Amazing hold-up player. Um, 21 man of the matches, you know, since he's been here, which, you know, it's, it's quite good. That's quite good. Um... Where it falls down for me for Firmino is the reason why he's not further up this list, and it's not a criticism to him because he's been fantastic for them, because 30 million, is I believe that when we go up further up the list, there's certain players that scored a lot more goals, um, and there's certain players who had better overall seasons. I do believe Firmino had a great... He's had some good seasons, but his breakthrough season was definitely when they got to the Champions League final. I don't think he's recreated that level of form since they've got to the Champions League final in terms of the amount of goals he scored in the Champions League as well as the link-up play he was. I think that was him at his best. And I don't think he's got to that level, though he's still been good and maybe he's dropped off a bit more now. But for 30 million, for a player that helps you to win all that, for the, the way that club wants to play and the fact that he improves the other players around him, yeah, he definitely has to be on my list at six. Five is arguably the best goalkeeper in the world. Allison, you know what I'm saying? Cost 66 million, but he's worth every penny. You know what I'm saying? He's won everything, like I said before. Won Golden Glove, won Champions League goalkeeper of the year, won, was Ballon d'Or seventh place, was FIFA World Cup best um, keeper. I mean, FIFA, yeah, FIFA best goalkeeper in the world, uh, was FIFA World Cup 11. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, he's completely improved that defence. That defence before he came in was conceding, I think, 40, 40, it might, it might have been like 40, 30, somewhere between 38 and 42 goals. He comes in, they have their best season, they concede only 22 goals. This season they only concede 33. He's been fantastic. He's great on his feet. Um, yeah, for me, he's by far the best goalkeeper in the league. He hasn't dropped off. Like, I would say Edison has probably dropped off. Um, he has everything that you want. You know what I'm saying? Everything you want. He's a great leader from the back. He's a fantastic goalkeeper. We're going to go straight to four. Four is a player that Everybody rates, you know what I'm saying? Everyone. Some people even had him higher. But for me, trophies, as well as individual time, but trophies are very important to me. We're going to have Suarez. Suarez, um, League Cup winner, title challenge, Golden Boot 2013-14, Liverpool Player of the Year two years in a row, PFA Player of the Year, um, European Golden Shoe, you know, top goal scorer in all the leagues, in out of all the league scorers in the top leagues, Premiership Team of the Year twice, 82 goals and 32 assists in 133 games. Bought for 22 million, had 30 man of the matches. Now, we know Suarez was just, he was out of this world. Fantastic football player. Carried the team to a fantastic title challenge. Value for money, no doubt. Um, he was there for three and a half seasons. Out of three and a half seasons, I would say that he had, well, he had that one, well, he had two outstanding, you know, quote unquote, world class seasons. His first season was okay. He came in January. He was definitely by far the best player on that team. He just didn't win anything. He won the League Cup, but he just, he just didn't, he just didn't take it further enough. And then he had a couple off the field antics. But I just believe that the people above him were better for what Liverpool needed at the time. But he was unfortunate. He probably would have been higher up the list if he was part of this title-winning Champions League winning squad. Straight to three. Three. 
and people are going to be complaining. Saudi or money? I know, I know. Are you guys going to complain? Just go in the comments, right? You know, what you believe you don't mean. Um, Saudi or money? Saudi or money? Obviously, everything is won. He's been in Champions League team of the year. He's won Golden Boot last season. Shared it with Salah. He won um, PFA Fans Player of the Year this year. You know, 81 goals, 20 assists, 170 games, cost 35 million. Fantastic from the day he came in. Obviously, I don't think you guys remember when he came in, and then I think he got into the Expo to African Cup of Nations. It was good that season, he scored 13. Then the next season, they scored like 20, he scored 10 in the league, and then 10 in like the Champions League. Fantastic driving player, very good on the ball, probably the, arguably the best dribbler slash strength and work rate is outstanding. Um, there isn't too much he's not good at, to be honest. He's a great finisher. He's very modest. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a fantastic football player. He's an absolutely fantastic football player. And I think that Lil right now will probably say oh, he's, he's probably their best player for them right now. He's had the best season out of everybody. Um, and I don't think they regret buying him at all. I think his value is three, four times, 35 million. Um, yeah, so... Let you know, do honorable mentions now. So let's say honorable mentions. These are the players that didn't make the top ten, but players that I do think were notable signings. Uh, Joe Gomez. Obviously, how cheap they got him from Charlton. He's been fantastic this season. He was just unfortunate with injuries. That's why he probably didn't make my list. Um, yeah, so he hasn't really played for more than one season, like fully. You know what I mean? But I think he's been good. Uh, Milner. Milner was the one that was probably the hardest. I was between him and Coutinho. I just think Coutinho was a better player, though Milner won more. I think Coutinho was a better player season through season. Uh, Milner, obviously, fantastic football player. Broke the record for most assists in the Champions League. Played left back. Uh, played centre mid. He was a great player. But when you check him a lot, a lot of the time he was a rotation player. So... Though he was fantastic, he was never. He was always a fill-in player in the sense where, when he was left back, they always wanted a new left back. When he was centre mid, they were always trying to, you know, constantly see if they could get somebody else that could fill in that position long term. But I thought Mino was fantastic for what he is on a free transfer. Um, Fabinho, obviously, yeah, Fabinho was great. I do think he was a bit dodgy when they first signed him, but I think he's been amazing this season. I just think he hasn't done it long enough to crack any of the people in the top ten. Sterling obviously got him for 450k. I think Sterling was fantastic, but again, I just think that Coutinho and other players in the list for him to crack in the top 10, I just think that they became the quote-unquote world-class at Liverpool, whereas I think Sterling became world-class after he left Liverpool. Um, Sturridge, again, fantastic season. It was very tough for Sturridge because he had that season where it was just out of his world. In fact, a year and a half when he first came to go 10 and he got 21. I just think that his injuries and his total decline falling off, you know, total decline coming off later. It just affected the way that he was viewed on me putting him in that top 10, but it was it was literally touch and go. It wasn't by anything because him, when he was called as 21, he was just, he was out, out of this world. And last but not least, Matip. I think Matip is an honourable mention. I, I believe that Matip was playing first team. He played, you know, in the Champions League final that they won last year. They got him on a free contract. I think he was outstanding. I think at the start of this season, he was actually perform outperforming the other centre back, but you know, they he probably won't get a mention like that. But I'll mention him because I think that for what what you got for free, he was fantastic, like Milner. And yeah, let's go back to number two. So number two, the one, the only, the machine, the beast, Virgil Van Dyke. What can you say about Virgil Van Dyke? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, obviously Premier League, Champions League, Europa League. But let's go to the stuff that he won alone because we know what the whole team won. PFA Player of the Year, Team Team of the Year, you know what I mean, uh, Premier League Team of the Year, UEFA Player of the Year, Champions League Team of the Year, two-time, Ballon d'Or second place. No one dribbled past him for a whole season. And he scores a few goals as well. I think it's six, seven goals in all competitions a season, which is actually quite good. For, um, oh, money, yeah, back to money, got 22 man in matches. But um, 75 million, it was a lot of money, but he was worth it. And for a centre back, he got 10 man in the matches. And if you know anything about football, centre backs do not get man in the matches. Not really, you know what I'm saying? Not really. Not unless the game is like a dead block or something like that. And they just really kind of stopped everything. Majority of the time, it goes to the strikers. And sometimes, yeah, go, I would say it goes to the strikers and the midfielders. Um, I think he's a fantastic football player. He can play. He can read the game. You can't really get past him. He's strong. Like I said, he scores a few goals. He never seems like he's under pressure. He makes everything look like he's easy. And as soon as he comes into the team, the reason why he's number two for me, 
why he made his hat is the, re- the moment he comes into that team, that defence goes from almost 50 a season defence to get to the Champions League final, to the next season 22 goals, to this season 33. He's completely improved the team. He's worth every penny. Obviously, the money was steep, but he's worth every penny for what he's done for that team. He's a leader. He's a good football player. He gets some goals. He's, he's just amazing. And that leads us to number one. You guys already know who number one is. I know it's going to be mad controversial. I don't think people, a lot of people have him as number one, but I think he doesn't get the respect that he should get. Mo Salah. Golden boot twice in a row. You know, won the Premier League, Champions League, Super Cup, Ballon d'Or second place. Most goals. He has the most goals and the most assists out of any player since he signed. And when I break that down, I'm talking about he has the most goals. Every season, nobody scores more goals at Liverpool than Mo Salah. And we could say, yeah, he dropped his goals. But the fact that he scored, what, 40-something his first season, no one came close. And then he scores 20-something his next season. And, I mean, yeah, most goal contributions. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Most goals, yeah, more, you know, 22-something. And he school scores the most goals. Yeah, money doesn't ask for it. And then this season, he has the most goals in the Premier League as well. And, you know, in the Champions League. He also has an amazing assist record. And nobody has as much goal contributions. He has great goals against, you know, some of the top teams. The goal against Chelsea, for example. I The reason why I give it to Salah is numbers matter. Like, the amount of goals and whatever, we can pretend that it doesn't matter. What Salah does, first of all, we're talking about a player that the manager didn't want. We're talking about a player that comes into the team and from day one, I remember from the friendlies against Barcelona, which is not fair. We're talking about a player that scores four goals in one game. We're talking about a player who changed the way the team played. He made them into this, partly made them into the superstars they were because he comes into the team. Marnie's playing on the right at that point. I don't think people remember. They push Mane to the left, who make, who we say Mane became the player he is today because he's so much better on the left than he is on the right, and he's still good on the right. He changed the way they play into that, the inside forwards at this point. Now, Firmino starts to drop off. He plays the way, They play the way Klopp wants to play. He starts scoring goals. He gives them the confidence enough to sell their best, who they arguably was their best player at the time when they sold him, was Coutinho. And he just continues throwing in the numbers. Then you get to the next season. They're saying he dropped off and he's still scoring numbers. What do you mean, a player that even when they say he drops off, he still scores the most goals in the team? To my player, that assist numbers are strong. You know what I'm saying? As good as Marnie was last season, he probably was arguing better. His numbers are still there. You know what I mean? Men lie, women lie, but numbers don't. And that's what the guy gives you. The guy gives you numbers. He gives you real star power. He gives you big games. Scores in the Champions League. You know, scores the winning penalty in the Champions League final. We say penalties are easy. But in that pressure, still scoring is very difficult. You understand know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the guy that was part of the team that broke the most uh, goals scored in the Champions League group stage. You know, all three of them finished with 10 goals that season in the Champions League. You know what I mean? He was part of that team and he had the most assists. To my a guy that, you know, has cracked, you know, cracked over 20 goals and over 10 assists multiple seasons. He scored, last season he scored 20 I think mean, multiple, yeah, multiple, you know, cracked over 10 and 10 assists multiple seasons. This season, 19 goals and like 10 assists. The first season, like 30 something goals and 10 assists. I mean, a guy that gets the numbers, you know what I mean? For a player that we say is selfish, he's an excellent dribbler, he's a good passer, he's a good assist man. And I just think he's the catalyst that made them able to believe in themselves that they're able to win. Because when you have a player like that, you're always in the game. When you have someone that puts the ball in the back of the net. And I think for 30 or 42 million, for what he's done, you know what I mean, arguably will go down, you know, arguably might go down as one of their best ever goal scorers over time. And let's not even talk about that. He's only been there for three years. Um, you got UEFA third best player. Um, let's see what you find out. In 152 games, you remember Marnie, and this is why Marnie is doing Marnie, 170 games, 81 goals, 20 assists. Salah, in 152 games, has 94 goals. And 38 assists. That is insane. He has more goals and assists than probably, well, I think Mane is the second best goal scorer at the team. Yeah, he's the second best goal scorer at the team. And Salah has more goals than any of these guys. You know what I'm saying? And he's been there the least time. He's been there less time than Firmino. He's been there less time than Mane, a whole season less. You know what I mean? So I just think he was absolutely fantastic. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, yeah. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. Hopefully, I'll have some other guys when we go for the next team, which will probably be Man City. But yeah, I'm out.